right? But as soon as that high came down, so did I. I came crashing down every single time and it was like I would feel lower and lower and lower and lower to the point where I wouldn't even feel better after smoking weed. I would feel normal. <sighs> Today is the day that the Lord hath made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm here to set somebody free today. So I see a lot of videos about people like talking about how they quit smoking weed and like telling other people to stop smoking weed or stop doing this. But I, I personally feel like it's one thing to tell somebody to stop doing it, but it's a totally other thing to explain to, to a person why they would benefit from not doing it. You know what I mean? There's a reason behind why I chose to stop smoking marijuana. And I really want to get on here not to bash people who are smoking marijuana. I want to sit here and just really talk about like why stopping this habit was one of the best things that I ever did in my life and how my life was an actual train wreck while I was engaging in this habit, this addiction. And I didn't think that it was a train wreck. Like I didn't think that it was negatively affecting me at first. I didn't think that it was harmful for me at first. And this brings me into my first point, complacency. Marijuana will make you feel Regardless of what your circumstances and situation actually is, it is going to make you feel all good about everything. That can become very negative very quickly because there are reasons why we are allowed to experience being uncomfortable, why we're allowed to experience negative emotions, feeling like we want something more from life. Smoking weed makes all those feelings go away, okay? If you are having a hard time or you're experiencing a negative emotion, you can smoke weed and you won't be thinking about any of the things that are going wrong in your life. It makes you feel like you don't need to do anything to change your situation. I don't have to go to class, it's fine. I don't have to, I don't have to study for this test, it's fine. I don't have to go to the gym. I have the munchies and I'm gaining weight like crazy, but I mean, it's fine. Like this is very dangerous, okay? Because a lot of people, I know for a fact, regardless of whether people want to admit this or not, people People use it as an escape from their feelings. People use this substance as an escape from their reality. And once in a while, taking a vacation once in a while, taking a mental vacation once in a while, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are constantly every single day escaping the reality of your situation into a place of everything being okay when everything's not okay, into a place of everything is gonna work out when everything's not working out, if you don't put two hands to work and make it work out, it's not gonna work out. And so running away from these feelings, it only prolongs this state of being and it makes it worse until you get to a place where you are forced hopefully sooner rather than later i'm so glad it happened to me before like i was like five ten years into this habit and like my I, my whole life had left me i'm so grateful to god that he woke me up earlier and you know it didn't spiral into something that took years and years of years away from my life regardless you know the bible says god is the restorer of time he can restore the years that the locusts have eaten so even if you have spent many of your years like in addiction or in bondage to anything like god can restore that time um so i just want to encourage somebody who may feel like oh i've been doing this for so long i feel like i wasted so many years of my life doing things that i don't want to do don't worry like if you give your life to god and you submit to him in unreserved obedience he will restore the time okay you just got to ask him to and sometimes you don't even have to ask because he already knows what you need before you ask him <laughs> now to my next point i literally could not do anything and enjoy anything without smoking first things that even used to bring me joy before i had no interest in all i wanted to do was smoke weed like when i thought of like fun i thought of smoking weed i couldn't go to the movie theaters with my friends and just enjoy the movie i had to be high for the movie i couldn't go to like a theme park and just enjoy the rides and enjoy the vibes i had to be high for the vibes it took away the joy <laughs> And this is really sad. This is actually this probably the saddest thing that I experienced is it took away the joy from things that from just like the harmless, simple things of life. Those things became hard for me. Things that I loved to do before, you know, no longer like I just didn't care for them, um, which kind of goes hand in hand with the complacency. Like you just don't want to do anything. And it's very sneaky. In the beginning, there was not that many negative effects. It was after prolonged consistent use that I started to notice these things increase more and more. I became socially awkward and withdrawn. I literally lost my personality. I could not be in social gatherings and like be cool or funny if I, unless I was high. And really I wasn't even cool or funny. I just thought that I was because I was high, but like I'm pretty sure the other people that were around me would just be like, oh my gosh, this girl's tweaking out. Like, is she okay? <laughs> I really hope not, but like, I wouldn't be surprised if that was like the vibe that I was giving, like at least a few times, because even if you're like 
pretty chill or like mellow when you're high and you don't you 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 think you can mask it really well i guarantee you especially other people who know who've been around it who've done it like other people can tell when you're under the influence of something even if you think that you're passing well you're probably not <laughs> okay that's a word for somebody today okay don't be delulu okay you are not fooling anybody the worst thing though was probably the depression and this is a huge huge thing that i really feel like is important to talk about with marijuana because a lot of people have this belief that marijuana cures their depression or that marijuana helps their depression it did nothing but make me extremely depressed it exasperated any other underlying things that were all that i was already dealing with it does not help your depression i don't know baby baby please listen to me because if this is what you believe if you have been using this substance habitually to help your to aid your mental health especially if you're a neurodivergent because i have adhd and so it was especially it exasperated a lot of negative things for me please listen to me when i tell you marijuana is not helping your depression marijuana is not helping your mental health not when you are using it on a daily consistent basis not when you are using it to run away from your problems not when you are using it in a way that impedes your life where you have to make room in your schedule where you could be doing other things being productive without it where you can't function without it baby it is not helping your depression please listen to me when i say marijuana is a band-aid i'm not telling you this as a psychiatrist as a doctor like who no i experienced this firsthand i know what this does marijuana is a band-aid when abused and used um too much it actually takes place of the dopamine receptors in your brain meaning you can smoke weed so much that your brain begins to rely on marijuana for its serotonin its dopamine it begins to rely on marijuana for feelings of happiness for feelings of contentment because your brain has stopped producing those things on its own because you're re you're introducing more than it needs with an outside source all the time what it would do was it would make me feel better when I was high, right? But as soon as that high came down, so did I. I came crashing down every single time. And it was like, I would feel lower and lower and lower and lower every time after I would smoke weed, once it became such a bad habit, to the point where I wouldn't even feel better after smoking weed, I would feel normal. Like I would smoke weed to not feel like my life was a dumpster fire. I would smoke weed to just be at equilibrium. That is a scary place to be. When I Think about that time in my life. It was so dark. It was so like, and, th and that's how that's how it gets you, you know? A lot of people are so in love with this drug and they don't know that it's a very silent killer. It'll rock you to sleep and tell you that everything is okay while everything behind you is being set ablaze. It'll rock you to sleep and rub your head and tell you and, and sing you sweet nothings while it, everything behind you is being destroyed. Your life is being stolen from you, your time. You can never get that back unless you submit your life to God. God is the only one who can restore time to you if you lose your time you waste your time you waste years of your life not doing things that you thought you should have done by now because you are addicted to this substance that has taken uh, a bit a part of you away a part of your life away you can't get that time back and also like just as a health from a health perspective in general like there haven't been enough long-term studies on the effects of marijuana to really know for sure how long-term use affects people years and years and years down the line okay this is just like cigarettes right when cigarettes were first introduced to the population everyone thought they were the bee's knees you could smoke cigarettes in your car you could smoke cigarettes everywhere people were doing that everywhere because no one knew that it was literally cancer on a stick no one knew that it was it was a death stick right why because it hadn't been around long enough enough people hadn't been using it for long enough to know what the negative effects were fast forward 30 40 50 years later there are commercials with people who can't even who can't even use their own voice because of this thing that they indulged in this um habit that they thought was so cool and so good because they were uninformed they were ignorant to the truth they were blind to the truth and they were addicted I don't care what anyone says any you can be addicted to marijuana if you cannot go three months without it just without sweating you will see how much you're not dealing with in your actual life you will see how much things actually affect you because you're not used to experiencing your emotions like the healing that i went through when i stopped smoking weed was so painful but so profound and i'm so happy and i'm so glad that i went through it because i'm a stronger person now and i know how to deal with hard situations i had to face certain things i had to face you know uncomfortable situations uncomfortable emotions without running away from them and the lord really walked me through that and it was the best thing that i ever that i ever did for myself for my 
life um, was allowing myself to go through things that I would normally run away from, okay? Because I'm a runner. If I'm not feeling something, I'm out. You know what I mean? I don't want to experience it. I don't want to go through it. I, I don't like pain. I, don't, I want to avoid it, right? I'm not a coward. And I just want to make that abundantly clear. Like, please don't get it twisted because I ain't never scared of nobody, nothing. I don't have a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Please don't play with me. Okay, but I'll leave, you know, if I'm not feeling a situation, if I'm not feeling an environment. People have seen me do this. Like, if I am not feeling an atmosphere, if I'm not feeling an environment, I'm going to leave. If I'm not feeling a job, baby, I don't have to work. God supplies all my needs. I don't have to be here. I'm going to leave. And that's that's just the mentality that I have with life. And sometimes that's not right. Like, sometimes that's not always the best solution sometimes you have to face things sometimes you have to go through things sometimes you need to experience uncomfortable situations to make yourself stronger to be built into the best version of yourself and when you are running and numbing yourself with marijuana you are not able to do that you are stagnant and you are not able to grow no matter how wise and spiritual you think you are when you're high you are keeping yourself stuck in that place you're never going to grow never gonna grow you'll always need it it'll always be a crutch to you i have add it does not have me and um one of the things that this habit did was it really really exasperated my condition and like prior to becoming like addicted to marijuana my condition was very like manageable and it wasn't very like it wasn't a severe case you know like i obviously had some things like here and there that i needed to work harder at in terms of being focused and productive in a day but for the most part it wasn't like it wasn't serious but this and this is especially true for neurodivergent people you should not be using any substances as a crutch i just really want to speak to somebody though who is like who feels like because i know how it feels to feel like you need something to function like you need this substance to live to feel like life is worth living i know how that feels because when your brain doesn't naturally produce something and then you introduce your brain to something unhealthy that gives it the feeling that it wants it can be very very easy to latch onto that thing no matter how unhealthy it is for you and um become a slave to it but there are healthier ways to achieve that you know, you don't have to use marijuana every day. You don't have to smoke weed every day. Like if you're doing it every day to get through your day, it's a it's a liar, it's lying to you and it's convincing you that it's helping you and it's only hindering you and it's only hurting you. And there are um, but there are better ways to manage your condition. You know, if whether you're ADHD, I know that people who are autistic can deal, deal with this as well. Um, or just neurodivergent in any way, like if you're OCD or whatever, whatever, you know, neurodivergent people have a propensity for addiction because it's a form of self-medicating. I understand this. Know that I understand, like, I get this. I get this. I get it. Um, but there is a better way and there is a healthier way. There's a way that won't kill you and steal your life from you and destroy everything that could have been for you. You don't have to allow the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy everything that you have, everything that God placed inside of you just to feel like you can make it through the day. You were designed for more than just survival. Human beings weren't created just to get by. You were designed to be great. You were designed to prosper, to be abundant, to tread upon the heights. You can't do that when you're chained, when you're bound to this substance that's only keeping you stagnant, that's keeping you running away from growth. It's just, it's just not ideal. Um, and just generally, it's just not healthy for you. If nothing else that I just said resonated with you, whether or not you think that it's affecting your life, there are not enough long-term studies to know exactly how marijuana affects a human being after prolonged use. At the end of the day, human beings were not created or designed to inhale smoke into our lungs. We just were not created or designed to do it. Like, just like cigarettes were bad, you know, it's just you, we aren't created to inhale smoke into our lungs. It's literally fire. You're lighting something on fire and inhaling it. There is no way, there is no way that that is going to be completely harmless to you in the long term. As a human being, just on a basic level, human beings were never created to inhale fire. We were created to breathe air and breathe out CO2. We were never in created, it was, it's unnatural. It is damaging regardless of what you're inhaling, it's literally fire. Okay, you're inhaling fire into your lungs. And so if you care about your physical health, if you want to, to, to live long, if you wanna, cause who knows, God forbid, but we don't know if long-term marijuana use, smoking it, you know, could put you in a voice box five, 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, God forbid. But we don't know, you know, just like with vaping, how things are, we're learning things about vaping every day, you know, with smoking, it's the same thing. And I started to, I started to, to, to experience adverse effects in my health, my mental health, 
and my physical health. Like my throat, my throat started giving me issues. I'm a singer. And which just goes to show you that it was a spiritual attack on my life, this addiction, because I need my voice. It's my main function on this earth is to use my voice. And it started to affect my throat, started to affect my mind, which is another really important tool that God has given me in order to operate in the, the world that he's placed me in and the role that he's given me in the earth. I need my mind and I need my voice. And so those are the two things that it affect, affected and attacked the most. And you know what? I would say for every single person, these are two of the most important things because your voice, you, you need your voice so that you can speak into your life, so that you can speak things into existence. You know, if you, if like for work, for whatever it is that you're doing in a day to day, you want to be strong. You want to have a good voice, whether or not you're a singer or not, you need your mind because um, this is where, this is where the battle starts. If you are already being weakened and you are already being infiltrated and your mind is already compromised your mind has already been damaged like you make yourself susceptible to attacks of the enemy of every kind so yeah when i stopped smoking weed my life literally got so much better like i started to lose weight i gained so much weight smoking weed like, i know that not everyone gets the munchies but a lot of, like one of the side effects of smoking weed is wanting to eat all the time and, and covid did not help i literally went from being physically healthy physically fit um just my normal self and i gained so much stop smoking weed lost all the weight started to have more energy to go to the gym like you literally could not convince me to go to the gym for fun before i had no like it was literally the worst thing in the world was for someone to ask me do you want to go to the gym like how dare you say that to me that was me when i was like smoking weed every day <laughs> like i did not care i just wanted to sit eat my food and watch a jolly good show and laugh myself to death but thank God for resurrection. Thank God for life. Thank God for deliverance. But now it's like, I love being active. I love working out. I love moving my body. You want to know why? Because I found that it was a healthy way for my brain to get dopamine. It was a healthy way for my brain to get those endorphins that I was getting from, you know, a synthetic manufactured version of what our bodies were created to do naturally. Our bodies were naturally created to move and be active in order to stay healthy, in order to stay fit, in order to stay vital. And those endorphins, that dopamine, it lasts. You get a good workout in the morning you're 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 feeling good for the whole day rather than if you you smoke you smoke a blunt you feel good for 20 minutes and then you feel so much worse like after and, and then you need to smoke again just to get just to get yourself up again and then you feel worse after i also started to like develop my personality back like i got my personality back i started to love the things that i once loved like even as a kid or the things that my passion started to come back like i started to work on the things that i loved um i started to like become more myself Self, like my personality came back you know how I said I couldn't go to like a party or be around people without being high or I just I had anxiety I wasn't myself I went into a show that literally went away I've always been a very outgoing I was an outgoing kid I was always funny you know and just had like this big personality that kind of like went away when I started smoking weed a lot and when I stopped smoking weed those things started to come back um, I started to get my life back, literally. And I started to be productive. I started to see, you know, myself complete projects. I started to see myself start things that I've always wanted to do and see them through and see them grow. And I really was able to grow in my relationship with God because, you know, I didn't have this other God, you know, fighting for my attention. And this is another big thing. You may be spiritual, you may not be, but allowing the fuzz and allowing the haze to go away so that I could you know see with clarity and sobriety like the truth and what the truth was and who the truth was and what that meant for me and how that could help my life that was that's probably the only reason i was able to get sober was because of my faith in god and was because of my reliance on him and my dependence on him and his power at work in me and through me like that's the only reason i was able to get sober i would not have been able to do it on my own the way that i would literally like when i didn't have any money because i'd spent all my money already i would go into my car and like pick like weed crumbs off the floor this is so like this is a testimony though because god gets the glory from this because i've literally come such a long way i was so like i was so cracked out like i would pick the crumbs of weed off the floor to try to make a blunt with it if i didn't have enough money ten dollars to buy like another gram yeah cracked out that's why whenever people say you can't be addicted to weed i laugh most people are in denial but a lot of people also just aren't able to conceptualize or acknowledge the fact that everything affects everybody differently and i would venture to say that most people who are using marijuana and using it to a in a way that it's a part of your weekly schedule like you smoke weed multiple times a month you smoke weed multiple times a day multiple times a week um, most people who are fall into that category you have an addiction at the very least you have a bad habit that you would probably benefit from breaking you know what i mean but people aren't able to a lot of people don't want to acknowledge that a lot of people don't want to 
part with their beloved plant. Um, and it will ultimately, like, you can either choose to stay in your comfort zone, because that's really what it is. It's comfort for a lot of people. And you can stay in your comfort zone and allow it to kill you. You can stay in your comfort zone and die there. Or you can wake up to the truth. You can try something different. If you aren't happy with your life and how it is now, the only thing that you're going to get by doing what you're still doing now is the same life that you have now. If you want something better, if you want something different, then do something different. And, you know, for me, I feel like stopping the habit of smoking weed, doing something different, getting out of my comfort zone and allowing change to come through my life through changing my habits, through changing my ways, through letting go of the things that were holding me back and keeping me stagnant. That was how I saw increase in my life. I'm quick as a whip. My mental health has gotten back better. Like I don't deal with depression anymore. I don't deal with suicidal thoughts. I was suicidal at my worst. Like when I was deep in the trenches of addiction, suicidal. I don't deal with that anymore. I will never smoke, you know, like weed again. I just know that I personally can't smoke weed again, but you know, I reached a point where that's okay with me because I am able to have consistent joy and consistent peace that doesn't waver. It doesn't go up and down. You know, it's it's just constant. It's just always. And I attribute that um, to the Lord and to the power that he's given me to overcome this addiction. And I really pray and hope for you that you were able to gain some perspective from this video. And I hope this was able to give somebody the push that they needed to try something different so that you can see something different in your life and in your circumstances. So yeah, I can do a follow-up video if you guys want on how I actually quit smoking weed and how I was able to beat the addiction and like what that looked like for me because it looked it looks different for everyone I know that some people you know they're like well you know one day I just came to Jesus and I never smoked weed again and I never wanted to do any of this stuff again and let me tell you something that was not my story okay and I know that everyone's story looks different and if you guys would like me to go into detail about like what I did practically to stop the habit and um how I was able to find freedom then I can do that just let me know in the comments but Again, I just hope this video was able to give you guys wisdom, insight, and revelation. Stopping this habit was the best thing I ever did for my life, and this is why. And I really hope that somebody out there who is in bondage will see this video and know that you know that you know that it's time for you to do something different so that you can live a life that is different from the life that you're living now. Stay holy. Bye.